The Premier League is back, no international breaks until March. It's a good time, I think, to be a football fan. Uh, whether it's going to be a good time to be a Chelsea fan, we will see by tomorrow evening. But this is my preview for Newcastle versus Chelsea, a game that hopefully will bring another positive performance, but this time bring the result and win that I think hopefully would justify that good performance. And you know, make it so we aren't kind of walking away from another big game feeling regret or feeling like we could have done more, even though, of course, the kind of the resounding feeling after that Man City draw was one of positivity, which I think it should have been for Pochettino, for his players, we're heading into what I consider the most vital part of the season, that period just before Christmas, which is so hectic and intense for every team. But then also that part after Christmas as we head into the new year where I think we're really going to find out where Chelsea are going to be this season. Are some of the more cynical Chelsea fans right in already thinking the idea of Champions League football is farcical? Or can this team use the positives we've seen so far this season and actually turn some of those draws, some of those potential defeats into wins and make it so Chelsea are competing seriously for a top four spot. We are going to find out and it obviously starts tomorrow at St. James's Park. If you like the sound of that, if you like the sound of more Chelsea content, please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on. Thank you for the support on the show so far this week. Hopefully a positive weekend awaits us as Chelsea fans. And also if you're listening on the podcast, thank you for tuning in that way as well. So we'll start off with Mauricio Pochettino's press conference, the key quotes from them, the key team news. And the big team news is firstly a positive Colwell, Levi Colwell is fit to play after, of course, missing the game against Man City. There were some concerns during that game and after it that the situation with Colwell could be a lot worse, but nice he's already back fit. And then we get into Romeo Lavia and Christopher Nkunku. Both of those are still out. So all of the kind of the hype we've been having around Christopher Nkunku returning, not going to be this weekend. Hopefully it is next weekend when Chelsea face Brighton on Sunday at Stamford Bridge. But in the case of Romeo Lavia, it may be easy to forget that Lavia is a Chelsea player because we haven't seen any of him. I mean, at least with Nkunku, we can think back to pre-season. Lavia, we have not seen make his Chelsea debut yet. So hopefully that will also be around the corner from Mauricio Pochettino's side. He said, no, it's difficult to assess them. They are in a good condition. In Kunku, a little head of Lavia, uh, doing things with the group last week, still not for recovery. He goes on to speak about some of the performances in big games. Quote, we were very good against Arsenal, Liverpool, and struggled against teams with less quality than us and play in a different way. That's part of process. We're a young team, started work four months ago, and we need to be more mature. Almost contradictory thing about this Chelsea team so far is that we seem to play better against the higher level of opponent which makes the games, the upcoming games against Newcastle, Brighton. Do you throw Man United in there? I think you still do because it is a big game. Maybe there's more confidence heading into those, but it's those games against Sheffield United, Wolves, Crystal Palace over the Christmas period and probably Luton as well, despite their place in the table where you are concerned Chelsea may slip up and actually not perform as well as in the big games. So that is going to be a massive thing for Pochettino to solve because You know, it's all right playing well in the big games, but if we continue to stumble in those games that are what I'd consider to be more bankable wins for Chelsea, we're going to get nowhere. You know, it's going to be one step forward, two steps back, and we can't allow that to be a consistent thing because it just will undermine any progress this season. Let's look at Newcastle. So I think quite a few weeks back, you'd sort of be considering that going into this game, Chelsea probably wouldn't have been close to the favourites. I'm not saying Chelsea are the favourites going into this game. Newcastle still ahead of Chelsea in the Premier League table, but they are coming into this game with two issues. They lost their last two games without scoring a goal. Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League and then beaten very convincingly by Bournemouth uh, before the international break. And the massive problem for them is the number of injuries that are stacking up for Eddie Howe. But it isn't as bad as maybe some of you think or some Newcastle fans and others are trying to portray because the news out of his press conference today, Eddie Howe, was that Fabian Shaw and Miguel Amaron are both fit to play. Bruno Guimaraes is back after serving a suspension in the Bournemouth defeat. Alexander Rizak, obviously a massive player for Newcastle up top. It's unsure whether he will return or not. So that is obviously a a big miss. Sean Logstaff was another player who suffered an injury setback at Bournemouth. Apparently he's still being checked on. 
whilst Callum Wilson, Sven Botman and Lewis Hall can't play against, obviously, his parent club. In the case of Wilson and Botman, both injured, Lewis Hall cannot uh, because he is only on loan from Chelsea, despite the fact that we kind of all expect he will be a permanent Newcastle player by next year. So trying to, to look at all of that information and predict a starting 11 for Newcastle this is what I suspect they'll go for they've kind of stuck to their 4-3-3 it's it's pretty much Eddie House formation since he took over last uh, not even last year it was the year before last wasn't it um, it's been a while now since he took over and he's done a lot of good work I think the big concern for them is that central midfield area because even if you have uh, Joe Willock and Bruno Gimaraes who are first team regulars I think settled players Miley obviously is a is a young player and I think maybe exposing him to Premier League football just a little bit too soon is probably not what was planned. So that's maybe where Chelsea can find some joy and we know how impactful Chelsea's midfield, that central area has been in recent weeks. Fabian Shaw and uh, Jamal Lascelles I thought were really exposed in the game against Bournemouth. I thought the way Bournemouth were able to get past Newcastle's midfield and that back four really exposed, really struggling, even with Kieran Trippier, who we know his quality, especially from set pieces from an offensive point of view. Tino Livermento, I think, will probably play at left back here. Uh, given that uh, Dan Byrne is injured, he would probably usually play in that role. Uh, but I think because Livermento from obviously his Cobham days, we know how versatile he can be. So I, I suspect he's going to play on the left side of Newcastle's defence. And then Joe Linton, Miguel Amaron, I think will play out wide. And then Anthony Gordon played up top for Newcastle last time out. If Isaac is not ready, I suspect he'll play the same role. You know, we're talking about some good players here, but without that focal point, and actually when you look at the, the bulk of this team, probably doesn't quite have the physicality and intensity that Eddie Howe would want from his team going up against Chelsea. But there still is probably enough from a set piece and counter-attacking point of view. Threats for Chelsea to consider, especially at St. James's Park, where we know the, the atmosphere can be a little bit intimidating and has been a tricky ground for Chelsea over the years. We lost there last year, had a little decent run where it felt like that kind of bogey ground um, sort of trademark we have uh, at St. James Park was, was going away. But this is obviously still going to be, a, I think, a tricky test for Chelsea. It's not going to be a walkover even with their injury situation. It's going to be a very close game. So then I move on to Chelsea. And without Christopher and Kunku fit, I think this makes the the team selection very easy. Now, even if he was fit, is he starting? Probably not. So for me, I, I sort of look at this and the, the longer term conversation we were having earlier in the week of where Nkunku is going to fit in, that will have to wait. But in terms of, for me, the, the biggest decision I was thinking of going into this predicted 11 was regarding left back and also regarding, you know, centre back too. And I asked you guys on my YouTube community page, doing a lot of polls. If you aren't on there already, please go and check out because I do ask for your opinions on different issues. And this one was, should Levi Colwell, who we know is now fit, replace Marco Carrera against Newcastle? At the moment, at the time of recording, 80% of you say no, 20% say yes. So it's resounding that Marco Carrera should keep his place. I'm going to say that both of these players should be starting because although there were a lot of positives against Manchester City, we did still concede four goals and especially some of the defending I mean, most the one that stands out most for me is the second Manchester City goal just before half time. Uh, I thought the the marking was absolutely woeful. That's not always on one individual, but I, and it's not always just on the centre backs. But I personally would like to see Levi on the left side of Chelsea's defence with Thiago Silva. I get the sense that Dzassi will keep his place here. Because it's not that Dzassi has had an awful start to the season. Far from it. He's been a very, very good addition, I think, for Chelsea. And Chelsea defensively have looked at, at times, uh, resolute. But I still think from a passing point of view, Marco Correa, I think the intensity one-on-one -on -one with wide players in recent weeks has been really encouraging. When he's come up against some of the best wingers in this league. Matoma in the League Cup. He dealt with him very well. Bakayo Saka, I think given the talent of Saka, I felt he dealt with him very well. And Phil Foden, again, there were moments when both of those players, Saka and Foden, could have impacted the game. And I think you kind of have to expect that at times uh, because Kukurea is not Reese James, but also we are talking about a high level of, of player. But the aggressive nature of Mark Kukurea, he really, it seems like to me, he, he's getting touch tight with these players. 
He's not being fearful of them and he's trying to be decisive and proactive when he can be. And I think it'll be the same case against Miguel Amaron on the right side if he's playing at left back. And as well, I felt that Levi, just on that side of the pitch, I prefer him at centre back. I feel like he can be a little bit rash. We've seen that in recent games. So it's, it's crazy to say that Kukurea is going to be a starting player, but we have to speak about reality. And reality is that Mark Kukurea has earned his place back in this Chelsea starting 11. And until Ben Shirwell is fit, which is probably now not going to be until the new year, Ian Matson's not even close to being a starting player at the moment. I think Kukurea keeps his spot, but I would have Levi Colwell for his defensive quality and also passing on the left side of defence, which means that Silva moves over to the right. Rhys James, obviously now back fit, going to be starting. His combination play forever up the pitch is going to be massive for Chelsea. The midfield three, we all know the midfield three, Moises Casado, Enzo Fernandez, Conor Gallagher. I have seen some discourse once again around Enzo Fernandez of maybe Chelsea and Pochettino not using him that well. I absolutely understand that point of view, but there also is a case that I, I feel that Enzo Fernandez in his own way, what he's being asked to do could be doing a little bit better. He was a little bit too sloppy with the ball for me against Manchester City. I criticised it uh, then. I know that people after that game were sort of pointing out that it isn't as bad as people are pointing out. And I, I think I said as much in my Man City review, you can go and check it. But I still think that Enzo, with the quality of player, we hope is going to become more influential. That also means that, you know, Conor Gallagher keeps his place in the team, which is not a surprise. And the front three, I'm keeping the same as well. Um, Raheem Sterling scored and had an incredible game against Man City. Just all round one of his best Chelsea performances so far. And it's, it's great to see that he's keeping up the momentum that started this season. And um, he's going to be, I think, another inf influential player here, hopefully, for Chelsea. Cole Palmer, he's the man in the moment. He's the man that Chelsea fans are speaking about and, and really praising at the moment. And there's a reason why. If Chelsea get a penalty, we know who's taking it. And Nicholas Jackson for all of the criticism, has four goals in his last two games. Yes, we can. you can caveat that with the fact that one of those games where he got three of them was against a, a team with nine men. But at the same time, that goal against Man City, I think, was arguably more important than the goals he scored against Spurs. To, to be in that moment, to equalise for Chelsea, to be clinical against the best team in the world should hopefully do him a lot of good. And I, as I say, that conversation around Christopher and Kunku's role in the long term is one we're going to have in weeks to come. But right now, why would you replace Nicholas Jackson as a focal point? It seems to be working well offensively with that midfield too. So I think Jackson keeps his place. So that is my starting lineup as ever. Please do give me your thoughts on the game and your predicted lineups in the comments below. Please do hit the like button, share this video around with friends. Uh, please do get involved in the community. It's been great to see people reacting to the shows this week and also on social media. You can follow the show. Just search Son of Chelsea on X, on Instagram, on TikTok, where I'm active as well. So thank you for watching and listening once again, and I'll see you again very soon. All the best.